Great. Good afternoon. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and research engineer in telecommunications. And I'd like to speak to you today about the uh, war in Gaza and the situation in the Middle East. I have not made a statement on my YouTube channel about Israel and Palestine in quite some time. And as a armchair student of biblical history, it is extremely sad to see uh, what is going on there today. And um, I think, uh, you know, the, the key issue is, um, is people's views, obviously, and um, that we need to change the way people think about their history. I want to change the way people think who are interested in the great monotheistic Abrahamic faiths, which includes Christianity, Judaism, uh, Islam, the Druzes, and others. And uh, also for people to really understand the ethnic origins of Palestinians, Israelis, and Lebanese. Um, and the way history is taught is to create nationalism and um, and the way religion is taught at times is uh, with a kind of literalism, without real understanding of combining the sacred texts with archaeology and history, and being able to keep uh, your uh, faith or your uh, spiritual inclination, even as you're confronted with the facts that these religions evolved. Um. And I think if people really understood their history, uh, there would be much less discord. Um, I could be wrong. So the way they explain the early development of Judaism and other phase of the region uh, and how they formed and developed uh, could you know, bring a great deal more understanding than we have now. <laughs> I believe if people learn the history, both sacred in the Old Testament or Torah and Tanakh, the Quran and the New Testament, and combine this with a understanding of empirically known history in archaeology and archaeogenetics, uh, Israelis, Jews, Lebanese, Palestinians would realize that they have a marvelous shared heritage that should strengthen their bonds. Uh, and in, in the words of Ezekiel 16.3, the message of God, the master, to Jerusalem, you were born and bred among Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. And various people interpret this differently. But uh, the Jews and their religion uh, emerged out of uh, what appear to be two... Um, religious uh, groupings. One is the, uh, if you'll forgive my saying the word, Yahweh cult uh, or Yahweh faith, uh, which originated probably in the area in the south of what is today called Israel, in the uh, Sinai and the Negev and perhaps uh, in Egypt. And that's, uh, we've all heard of Jehovah. Uh, and then, um, the other aspect is El, as in Israel, uh, which means uh, some people interpret it as man seeing God or uh, persisting with God, but El is a name of God. And El was originally the leader of the Canaanite pantheon. And um, so we have this synthesis uh, of uh, the Canaanite uh, uh, religion, which it was polytheistic, had many gods and goddesses, with El as the leader. And even in the Bible, as we have it today, or the Torah, they didn't completely stomp out the uh, old tradition that there were many gods. Uh, so uh, the uh, key people that uh, the the Jews had a very 
good and strong relationship with were the uh, the Phoenicians, which were a Canaanite group. And I'm going to share with you um, a map. Give me for a moment. Okay. So this is a, a map uh, of uh, the Phoenician uh, network because each city-state uh, was um, semi-autonomous. It wasn't really an empire. And this Phoenician framework, which started at the collapse of the Bronze Age at the end uh, around 1200 BC, when Egypt withdrew from what is now today called Israel or Palestine back in Egypt uh, because of uh, the great collapse of uh, all of the uh, Bronze Age civilizations, uh, the uh, Minoans, the Mycenaeans, and um, the Hittites. And, um, uh, but uh, with that collapse uh, came a new, um, a new impulse, which is what they call the Iron Age. Uh, and uh, at the uh, time, uh, so, so the, the Phoenicians transported Jews and worked with Jews and spoke almost identical language uh, to the Jews. And, the, um, and genetically, the Lebanese are direct descendants of the Phoenicians. And Israel and Phoenicia, as, uh, which they didn't call themselves, they called themselves Kenani, uh, uh, had a very... Uh, prosperous and stable relationship from about 1200 BC to the time of the destruction of the temple by the Neo-Babylonians around 600 BC, so about 600 years. And one of the cities that the Jews went to was Toledo in Spain, called Iberia here. And when they were kicked out by uh uh, the, uh, the the during the Catholic sort of Inquisition, uh, sometime after 1492, uh, the Jews of Toledo said uh, to the Christians, "We have nothing to do with your Jesus. We we fled uh, the uh, uh, the land of Palestine or Israel um, 600 years before Jesus was born." And the the Catholics said, "Well, you know that's all fine, well, but you have to leave." and in fact, most of the Jews that were kicked out of Spain moved to Portugal. Uh, so this is Phoenicia. Phoenicia was the uh, inheritor of the Canaanite faith. And they worked closely with Israel. So uh, if you uh, study biblical history and you study source critical biblical history and you study uh, ancient history, um, there's no way to conclude, but that the uh, the Lebanese and the and the Jews, the biblical Jews, were uh, had a very positive relationship. And I'm going to leave my notes in the uh, a comment section, uh, in the video description section for you to look at. And uh, so here, the first note is about how the origin of, let's call him Jehovah, uh, and. Um, and that this uh, this uh, origination seems to have occurred in the south, and the most ancient description we have of uh, the um, followers of Jehovah is from about fourteen hundred BC, and this is the Soleb uh, inscription, which is in Sudan, and indicates that Israel was indeed a um, or the 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 uh, the tribe. Uh, which I think they called the, uh, let's see here if we can find the name of their tribe, the Shasu, cattle herding nomads. But they were considered one of the 12, uh, you know, adversaries of uh, Egypt. Um, and then finally, uh, I have an article here describing the many points in the Bible where the Phoenicians are praised. And that sort of gets us to the question of, you know, who are the Palestinians and what was the relationship of who are the modern Palestinians to the 
ancient Hebrews. Um, and, um, and this question is uh, 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 a little bit more difficult to answer for me at this time, because fundamentally Jews, Palestinians, and Lebanese all have similar amounts of uh, Canaanite ancestry. Um, and of course, uh, you know, many European Jews only have a tiny amount of physical connection because um, the main way the Jews moved into Europe um, well, was through the Phoenician Empire, the Greek um, uh, the Greek trading networks, the Phoenician trading networks, and then the Roman Empire. Uh, so um, I think I have a map here. This shows the dispersion of Jews. So uh, 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 from uh, ancient Israel throughout the Mediterranean uh, as of 300 AD, so how does a believer, you know, reconcile himself with these historical facts, which is that Judaism evolved and that it was originally, uh, uh, there was certainly more than one God, but when they were exiled to Babylon uh, and to Persia uh, at the, uh, when the Neo-Babylonian Empire uh, uh, conquered Jerusalem, they seem to have uh, gone to a period where they formalized their monotheism. Uh, and uh, that might have been because they lacked a state. So they had to have their religious scriptures extremely clear because um, they were in exile. Um, and uh, uh, then the Persian Empire uh, uh, came in about 100 years later and conquered uh, the Levant, this area from Israel up through uh, Lebanon and so forth. And the Persians allowed people to practice their religions and return to their homelands. Um, and this is a, another great, you know, irony, uh, which is that there's hostilities now between Iran and Israel. Yet the Persians uh, were, uh, on the whole, uh, extremely uh, beneficent uh, empire uh, that allowed Israel uh, to uh, come back and rebuild itself. So that's really, you know, my my uh, my main point today. I'm going to try to, you know, maybe in a month or so, uh, polish this presentation a bit more. Another thing I would like to add is uh, there's a great presentation by uh, Norman Cantor called the medieval Jew. And he actually gets back into this period. So uh, the Jews did very well in the pagan Roman empire. The problem they had was when it converted to Christianity because Judaism actually had millions of converts in the Roman empire and was competing with Christianity uh, for the uh, monotheistic uh, mind share. And when Christianity became the uh, religion of the Roman empire, harsh laws against Jews, prohibiting them from employing Christians, requiring uh, to consult the local bishop before they're allowed to build synagogues and so forth. Um, and uh, so actually the collapse of the Roman Empire reduced their oppression, but then the oppression returned in the, in the Middle Ages and the Jews were pushed out of Western Europe and into Eastern Europe. And then, of course, they experienced the pogroms and ultimately culminating with the Holocaust in Eastern Europe. So, you know, how does a Palestinian or a Lebanese person get their heads around re-welcoming the Jews to the Middle East? And, uh, and they have to understand, or they don't have to understand, but they might want to think about uh, the, the paranoia that has gripped the Jews particularly from their time in Eastern Europe under the period of the 19th to 20th centuries with the pogroms uh, and then the Holocaust. And, uh, you know, I personally think that uh, Palestine slash Israel should be split 50-50. We should use a combination of the 1947 borders that the UN uh, had along with the 1967 borders, which really 
reduce the Palestinian land to only 20 percent. Um, but more importantly than that is to create, uh, is to have some sort of reset. And this reset for, you know, how crazy uh, the uh, Netanyahu government or, or how bloody the Netanyahu government's campaign in Gaza is uh, really probably needs to be like the reset of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan, where they're demilitarized and rebuilt. Um, so that's uh, my thought of the day. Um, my goal is to create understanding and peace. And, uh, you know, it's just grief and sadness, I feel, about the uh, slaughter of the uh, Palestinians um, and the uh, conflict there. And uh, my hope that uh, the educational systems uh, teach people the truth about their heritage uh, and that in that respect, it reduces misunderstanding and hatred. Um, but uh, what's happened in the last 300 days is so extreme um, that uh, rebuilding this set of relationships is going to be a long-term project. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.